Hi, everybody. It's Jessica Stone at Stansbury Research, along with John Engel, editor of Stansbury Innovations Report. And, you know, we're hearing so much about the search for a cure and a vaccine for coronavirus. And we wanted to take an opportunity today, kind of go through the footsteps of a scientist and how they're approaching this problem right now. So John has uh, spent seven years as a bench scientist and worked on some clinical trials over the course of his career. Uh, John, there are teams of people all over the world working on this, really along two lines of effort. Effort. One is the therapeutic line and the other is the vaccine line. Can you explain the difference to everyone, please? Yeah, so there's an important distinction to make between those two types of treatments. Um, obviously, the long-term um, options that, that we really want to concentrate are on our vaccines. Those are, those are treatments that you can take before you're infected to keep you from getting sick. But as you've seen, there's a whole ton of people being infected by this right now where a vaccine wouldn't help these people, even if we had one. So the second type of treatment would be called a therapeutic, and that helps people who have already been infected. All right, and John, we're seeing a lot of big pharmaceutical companies essentially throwing all of their potential solutions at the coronavirus. How do those ideas go from um, a pool of ideas really to a testing phase? And, and what's the way to vet them all out? Yeah, so you're exactly right. What we're seeing is um, it's kind of unprecedented to have these big pharma companies work so closely with each other and also with other academic institutions to test this library of potential treatments, um, potential therapeutic treatments. And you can think of it a lot like a funnel. So you've got experimental treatments that have either failed in the past or have been approved, and they're dumping all these into the to the broad end of the funnel, and they're working through some simple experiments either with animals or with um, human cell lines to determine which are the experimental treatments that might actually make an impact. And those are coming out at the bottom end of the funnel where they can test those um, with more precision. One of the things we've heard President Trump talk about in terms of testing all of these ideas out is there's been a little bit of a resistance because he has such an urgency to get to a solution to, to taking the time to do clinical trials. They can take years, of course. Um, and I guess I wonder with such a need for some people who are really, really severely impacted and sometimes on death's door, is there a place at this point with coronavirus for people who just need a cure to give something a try? Yeah, so you're right. I, I think what we're seeing right now is, is, a lot of the clinicians and, and a lot of the scientists are going to have some of, some of these options ready um, much sooner than a vaccine. Like I said, they're going to come out of the bottom end of the funnel. And it's much more advantageous for these folks to try something that is experimental than to try nothing at all. Some of these treatments that are being tested, right, going through the broad end of the tunnel and coming out the, the bottom end, have already gone through clinical trials. So they've already proven to some degree that they're safe. And what we need to try next is to see if they're effective. So there's really minimal risk associated with, uh, with these treatments that have already been proven in the clinic to be safe enough for people to try. One of the things you and I have also talked about is that there is also a track for scientists to look at immunotherapy. What does that process look like? Exactly, so there's some really interesting things going on right this very minute. What we're seeing is similar to what happened during the Ebola crisis, where folks that got the Ebola virus and survived built antibodies against that virus. And what scientists were able to do was isolate that antibody and potentially use it as a therapeutic. Again, this would be a treatment that would be used if you got it um, and you weren't vaccinated against the virus. Um, the other option is something that is, is more of a, a test right now, is um, to take the blood plasma. So this, this is blood that's been spun down in a centrifuge. All of the cells have been removed and essentially is a clear to yellowish liquid that contains a lot of the antibodies against the coronavirus. And what they're doing is they're asking people that have been infected and that have survived the, the, the infection to donate blood so that they can try this as a potential treatment for folks that are really sick. It sounds like there's some signs of hope with respect to how survivors can help their neighbor, at least in the short term, before there are therapeutics available. 
Um, thanks so much for joining us, John. We appreciate your insights. I know we're all much more interested in science and health these days as a result of the COVID-19 outbreaks around the world. Um, if you would like to see more content like this, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or you can join us at Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. For now, that's all. Thanks for watching.